haven't done any baking or cooking on this channel for seems like ages. It was up forever. So yesterday was my Wednesday clean and like my parents they've cottoned on to the fact that if they want to get rid of stuff they can offer it to me first and I'll take or very often I'll take it away with them for them. Um, so yesterday the lady turned around to me and said do you want an apple pie dish? And I thought do I? I mean I do have some very basic baking dishes and things but I don't have an awful lot and I thought well she wants it out and I said yeah all right then and I ended up with two so I have two dishes they're the type they're, they're the old ones that you, that have the recipes in the bottom so there's this one which is quite a I don't know I think that make quite a good dinner dish actually like a pasta dish but this one is the proper apple pie dish now I don't have any apples at the moment but I was thinking about making a pie out of the pears that I bought the other day. So I've taken some of the just roll out of the freezer because where I've been eating my way through all the processed stuff because I'm trying to stop eating ultra pre or I'm trying to eat trying to stop eating an amount of ultra processed food. And I'm getting all these gaps in the freezer appearing now. I'm starting to see things that I had at the back that I'd forgotten how much I had. So sometimes you'll, you'll see quite a lot of things like just roll, ready-made pastry, and you can freeze it. So what I do, I'll take a pack, which is about kind of that size. I'll split it down the middle in the packet, fold it over and stick it in the freezer. And then I can just take out the half when I need it. So I've done that. So what I'm going to do is I've got half a pack of Just Roll here, which has been defrosting in the fridge overnight. And I'm going to make, I think, what I'm going to do, because it's quite a deep dish, I'm going to make a pie base in this dish. I'm going to take the pears. I've eaten one already. I'm going to put the three in and just lay them around in the pie dish and then I will probably make a crumble topping which I often do and it's really nice it just adds a little bit of difference to it I don't know I'm going to have enough pears to go in here I do have some canned fruit from last year I also have a tin of sliced peaches in the cupboard from maybe two years ago so I might go and get that and then if I need to fill this up I'm thinking about either doing a layered so I, I all the pears are around the bottom and then the peach slices on the top or do a half and half I might do a half and half because um, I think that'll be rather good fun so I'm just going to go and get that tin of peaches because I think it's my last one yep one tin of peaches I don't know how old these are actually. These ran out in September 2022. Should probably use them. Um, so I might do a half and half and do a deep, a deep pie, and then put a crumble topping on. I think that would be really nice because I get two for the price of one then. So I'm going to make the base, um, and because I'm cooking in the oven, of course, I need to make the most of that you can't just cook one thing in an oven anymore because electricity is too expensive so for lunch i'm going to do a burger i've got a couple of vegetarian vegan style burgers in the freezer they're okay and i've taken a, a cinnamon raisin bagel out the freezer and i'm going to put the burger in the bagel add tomato probably some onion as well and some of that black sticks blue cheese and make a nice thick chunky burger and i'm going to chop some fries some oven baked fries i've also i'm also going to open some of this garlic mayo vegan garlic mayo which goodness knows how old this is uh can't find a date and I'm also going to put 
this that I found in the freezer in and cook that up um, and then have that probably for dinner or maybe for lunch tomorrow. So I'm just making the most of the electricity that I'm burning in the oven. So I'm going to get started. First I'm going to do this apple pie. Uh, I'm going to start by making the base and then I'm just going to pop it in the oven just to crisp up before I start using the inside. So I'm going to move you round or down and then and then you can watch me make a pie.
forgot to hit record as I was cutting the, the pear pie. Here is a piece of the pear pie. I like making crumble toppings for pies. Very often it's, I, I started doing it because I'd roll out the pastry and re realise I hadn't made enough pastry to cover the whole of the top. But I have seen people doing this before, so it's not like I invented it. That's so good. I didn't put anything in with the pears, it's just pears, so you can really taste them. They don't need extra sugar or anything. And for that crumble topping, there's a bit of sugar, some cinnamon, and I always throw in some oats, because it just adds an extra crunch to the topping. And that's really, really good. There's a lot of pie there. I might have a week's worth of pie if I can control myself and ration it. I also have some, I think it's Outpro Greek yoghurt that I bought recently, so that'll be nice on the side as well with this. Enjoy. You can throw any fruit you want into one of these pies. Very simple base. Or you can also have it as an open top like a tart. So whatever you choose. Your recipe, you do it. Catch you soon. I nipped to Morrison's first thing this morning. There was a freebie. Chocolate milk. It was, this is £1.70. £1.70 for a small can. Look at it. Um, and it was free on the Checkout Smart app until the end of today so I think it was literally like a two-day offer sometimes I'll throw in these really short-term offers um, so I got it so I have free chocolate milk so I'm going to put that claim in today and go on with that um, yesterday I did a load of baking you see my my pear pie or my pear tart whatever it is and a bunch of other stuff that I did uh, I now have some good space in my one of my freezers which is rare and it's because I'm not buying any more processed bread I still have some in the freezer and I'm slowly using it up but I'm not replacing it because I'm trying to make that one of the things that I stop eating entirely so that when that's all gone when I do want bread I will make my own because I can make my own I have lots of resources to do that um, and I need to stop buying cheap processed bread just because it's a deal because I don't actually need it so I've got these lovely spaces now so I've also got in the freezer two of those um, vegetable soup broth mixes and it's just basically loads of chopped veg in a bag and I've had them in, in the freezer probably for over a year and I thought I'd take those out of the freezer today and I'm going to batch make a big casserole I've taken some sausages out of the freezer, four sausages, I'm going to fry them up, I'm going to dice them up, put them into the mixture, I'm going to add a tin of chickpeas and bolster up with some more veg and make a big saucepan of like casserole. I've got loads of those little um, plastic takeaway pots, the little dishes that you get from like Chinese takeaways and things and I'm going to fill those up and then stash all that in the freezer for a rainy day because why not so I will walk you through that or not even walk you through it I'm sure you know how to do it but I'm going to show you what I do and then you'll see what I have at the end and uh, that's going to be the end of my my baking session I think um, this will be obviously on the hob top rather than the oven and when I did the oven stuff yesterday I try to get as many things into the oven at once because you know it's electricity it costs money and I can batch make like that but this will just be on the hob and it won't take long to make so I'm going to get on with that so enjoy this one as well okay so here I am going to make this casserole um, I'm going to focus everything down there which is why you won't see me so much I'm going to start um, by I'm going to fry the sausages in the saucepan there so what I'm going to do is, I've got a bit of oil in the bottom, I've got the four sausages, I'm just going to whack them straight in as they are, and I'm going to cook them enough so that I can 
then take them out and chop them up. Now in with this, I am going to put some garlic. This garlic's been in the cupboard for a little bit too long, so I need to use it up before it ends up in the bin. So you're probably buying a clove of garlic, so you've got to then use it. So I'm just gonna chop this up a bit. There we go, just in the bits. And then that's gonna go in with the sausages. And I'm gonna put that on here. Get the lid, because it will probably spit. I also have a stock cube which will go in once the veg and the water goes in. These are also getting a bit old, got a bit squidgy, but they still work. I've just been in the cupboard for a little bit too long. So it happens when you bulk buy. <laughs> These were all on discount. So what I'm going to do just to help it along is I just chop the, the, uh, the stock cube up into like slices and then when it goes into the pot it'll just dissolve better so that's that i also have my tin of chickpeas discounted from god knows how long ago oh they're best before 2025 but i definitely bought these at least two well probably two years ago Now I haven't decided yet what other veg I'm going to put in with this. I'm just going to have a look and see what needs using. I think I will put that cauliflower in. That one's okay. So we'll put that in as well. Everything else I'm going to keep out because I do my stir fries and if I throw all the veg into this there's going to be nothing for day-to-day -day lunches. So I'm just going to chop up this cauliflower or what's left of it. Put the whole lot in, I put the roots in, the stems, the lot. It'll soften up nicely in the mix. now with these is I always find the easiest way to chop up a sausage is to get a fork and a pair of scissors and I'm just going to chop this straight back into the pan so what you do you get your sausage and just chop it
that's that done, I'm just going to put that back on, let that fry again for a moment. Drain my chickpeas, which have a pull cap, which is good. This makes life a bit easier, especially since it's a dented tin. ready to go. Now I'm basically going to tip everything into my pot. So we'll get that off the boil. Let's get the cauliflower in. This also just forms a base, so once it's been boxed and goes into the freezer, every time I take one out, it doesn't have to be an entire meal, so it might be that I have lots of broccoli or carrots or greens in the fridge, so I can add to that, and very often one of those tubs will last over two meals, because once it's out the freezer again, it's already been pre-cooked, so it'll last for a few days in the fridge. So what I'm doing here is just making the base for the main casserole, but you can add whatever you want on top. Right, that first slab of vegetables has defrosted enough for me to get the next one in. overfill with water because I thought the ice would add. This won't take long to defrost in.
whilst that is cooking, I'm just going to put that on a low heat and let that sit. I'm going to sort through all my boxes. Hello, it's my face again. So I have loads of this. I just need to match them all up with their lids. I know I have enough for what I need. One. Two. Three. I'm going to find more than I probably need because massive jumble. <laughs> well, I never quite put all the lids with the right bases. Let's give it a go. Does this come in that one? Oh, well. I have a lot more lids than I have bases. Interesting. some reason I have less bases than lids. Spares I guess. Right, let's put these back. Hopefully these four will be enough if there's any over, I'll keep some of this mix out and have it tomorrow. Because lunch is already planned for today. So, let's just put these aside so they're ready. These are microwavable because they come from the Chinese takeaway places. So, you can fill them when everything's hot out the off the hob. Okay, I think this is now ready. It's bubbling away and has been for not too long. 15 minutes maybe. Sorry, this camera's all over the place because I'm trying to record at different levels and I can't get everything in the screen at once. So, I'm going to face you downwards and then you can see me batch this up basically. Stunning content, I know, but I'm doing what I can do. seal four of those. Right, I'm going to strain this first using that and then I shall top up with juice afterwards because who wants to waste anything? So I'm going to do this evenly and see where we end up. Thank you. 
and now I'm just going to tip the juice. There's quite a lot of juice actually, so I'm just going to tip that in so that we all get some. <laughs> Who would have guessed that would have perfectly fit four tubs? I'm going to put the lids on. I can't remember which lid goes with which. And then I'm going to set those aside and when they're cold they can go in the freezer and we have four meals pretty much ready made for lazy days uh, or I can add to them depending on what's in the fridge if I have things that need using up like maybe I've got a leek that's on the way out or some greens or some carrots I can just add more to it I've also got that pack of garlic bread in the freezer and I think a bit of garlic bread for one of these would be really nice. So that's batch cooking on a Friday morning. <laughs> that's that's what you get, that's that's what you get from this channel. <laughs> batch cooking on a Friday morning. Oh my life is so interesting. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it useful. If you weren't sure about how to do really really simple batch cooking, um, then there you go. You've just had your first how-to. Enjoy.